Hi, I'm Joe Saunders from Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to look at how to build terrain the easy way with styrofoam packing. If you want to learn more about building a miniature, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Sometimes as a model builder, that perfect object just happens to come along. You know, that particular object that really just wants to become terrain. Last week, I got this toner in the mail, and when I opened it up, I found these really interesting styrofoam end caps. And how could you not want to make these into terrain? I mean, you could almost just put paint on them and stick them right on your spread if you wanted. Of course, I had to do a little more. So let's get to work on this piece. First, I took a razor saw and I cut any offending parts off that I didn't want. I figured I could make this into a pretty easy bunker. So I kept these wings for defilade walls and looked it over and imagined pretty much on the spot how I wanted this to work out. I finished cutting off the extraneous parts and then realizing that it's a little large for my scale, I measured it out so it would be about three centimeters tall and then still using my razor saw, went ahead and cut it more or less in half. I threw the bottom half away and then went in and cut a slot in the front. I tried to keep it roughly center and make sure it was big enough to be in scale. Then I smoothed off the interior with a sanding stick. I went to the back and cut a door and I work in 15 millimeter scale so that makes a door about two centimeters tall. And then I laid the whole thing out on a sheet of cardboard and mocked it up how it would look. I did a little sanding at the edges to round it off so the defilade walls would fit on an uh, angle. Now with a pen, I went to the sheet of cardboard and I roughly drew out sort of a organic shape around the bunker. This would act as a base. Once it was drawn out, I cut it out with a knife and placed it back on the sheet of cardboard. I wanted to make sure I'd cut a second layer with the grain of the cardboard at a right angle. This makes the base a lot stronger than if you use a single sheet of cardboard. I went in and traced out a base that was slightly wider and I cut that out too. Now I got out my trusty hot glue gun, laid down some beads on the top of the upper layer and I glued them together. Following this, I wrapped the whole thing around the rim in masking tape, and this sets up a bit of a beveled edge and seals off the end grain from the cardboard from being damaged when I start applying paint and flock and any other wet materials. Now I went back and traced the roof line of the bunker and I put it down on some black foam core which is probably the handiest terrain building material you can get. I beveled the edges by cutting at an angle and peeled the top layer off. If you have trouble peeling the top paper layer off you can always wet it if you want. Now I applied hot glue and pressed that down flat on the top of the bunker itself. A lot of World War II era bunkers had uh, earth on the roof to sort of disguise it from above and help it blend into the landscape. So I figured I'd probably do that here. Once I had it glued in place, I figured I better work out the seam around the edge a little better. So grabbing my sanding stick, I sanded down the edges to make them flush and rounded off the corners at the top of the bunker as well. Following this, I decided I better conceal the styrofoam on the inside. 
so I flipped the bunker over and grabbed a couple foam core cutoffs and just glued them into place. I let them stand a little ways inside the back door and then I also glued another one just on the other side of the firing slot at the front. Now flipping the model back over, I applied glue, glued it down to the base, glued the structures on the outside like the defilade wall and the buttress here. Tried to get the defilade walls on on roughly a 45 degree angle and then I put the dividing wall at the back door down. Now it was time to texture the outside of the bunker so I put some spackle down in a cup. I added some black acrylic paint to tint it and poured in the water. I stirred it up and I wanted to keep it fairly thin just thick enough that it would cling to the walls and add a little bit of texture but not too much so that it would roll off the outside of the bunker itself. And then taking a ratty old brush I went and applied it all around. Then I left it to dry overnight. So once it had dried, I checked it over, made sure it was okay, checked to see if there was uh, smooth surfaces, and then I mixed up some craft glue and water and began spreading it on the base. I also grabbed my craft knife and some styrofoam cutoffs and just cut out odd sized rocks and laid them down in the glue here and there just to add a little bit of extra interest to the base. After those were applied I went in sections laying down more glue and sprinkling on a mix of about 80% sand to 20% kitty litter and made sure the whole base was covered. Following that I put the watered down glue on the roof as well and sprinkled that with the sand and kitty litter mixture too. With that done, I took some rubbing alcohol, put a few drops of black acrylic ink in it, and began applying it with a pipette around the base. Over top of this I took a mixture of white glue and water, probably about 80% water to 20% glue, mixed in a couple dots of black acrylic paint and then spread that over the top. I let the rubbing alcohol break the surface tension on the following layers of glue and I coated the whole model in sections. When that was done I set it aside overnight to dry. So it's now the next day and everything is dried nicely. The model is all ready for the next step. So I've gone to some old sprues I had in my bits box and I cut off some extra gun barrels, some crates, anything that would be sort of interesting and help establish a sense of scale with the model. Then taking these I went and put them on the uh, base in different ways. So I glued the gun barrels to the uh, foam core backing at the back of the firing slot. And I glued these runner tracks down to the front, this plastic lattice on the sides, and I just added details to try to establish a sense of scale for the model and uh, increase the visual interest. Following that, I grabbed some black acrylic paint and I water it down quite heavily. And grabbing a couple different sizes of brushes. I begin to undercoat the model. So I spread the paint on quite heavily on uh, all the different parts and I'm attempting to layer it on to form a good foundation to uh, dry brush over top of. Now it's the next day and the undercoat is dry so I prepare for, as always with terrain, lots of dry brushing. I start with dark gray, put it in my palette, and begin to spread it 
in uh, heavy strokes over the bunker itself. Following this, I move to a light gray, continue the same process, and then dark brown, that goes down on the base. And I do this fairly carefully, trying not to get it on the bunker itself, although if I overlap a little bit with the uh, defilade walls or the front of the bunker, it doesn't really matter that much. Then I move to a tan color. And a beige, making sure to also do the uh, earth on the roof. And then I go back to the bunker itself with an off-white color. And I also put some of that on the base to sort of unify it with the ground around it. Then I do the same thing with white on both the bunker and the base. With the dry brushing done, I grab a fine brush and some various colors, and I go in and start picking out the details. I do things like the barrels on the guns, these metal covers over the ports, these crates at the back, and anything else that I can use to build visual interest. I also apply a little weathering to the bunker itself. You can see the finished results here. Now it's my favorite part of any terrain building project, and that's doing the landscaping. So I start by fastening down some lichens with uh, hot glue, and I pat them into place with watered down white glue. This keeps them a little more rigid. And then I go ahead and start building grass. And I won't get a lot into the method of building grass here. I have a separate video on it. I'll put a link up. After I built a bunch of clumps of grass, I took my pin vise and I started drilling holes into the surface of the model and then I pushed the clumps of grass down into the hole after dipping them in a little bit of white glue to hold them in place. Next is the really messy step and that's putting down static grass. So I put some patches of watered down white glue at random on the base then taking out my static grass applicator, I load it with a mixture of different colors, and I start spreading it all over the model. And I intentionally keep it kind of patchy and vary the colors, pouring the uh, excess static grass off between every new application of color that I do. With that done, I grab some uh, sand airbrush paint and I spray in a couple paths around the model where the ground will be more worn from movement of troops. And now finally, I'm at the last step, I apply the customary coat of matte varnish. I actually do two or three layers just to be careful. And now the project is finished. Here's the final result, a completed World War II bunker, maybe a little worse for the wear, all ready for display or to go on your games table. I've added lots of little interesting touches and details to give it a lived in and well worn look. It's also a good idea to add extra details like these crates or this abandoned equipment to give the model a real sense of time and place. If you would like to purchase the bunker from this episode, it is available on my Etsy store. But be quick, because there's only one of them. While you're there, you can browse the other pieces of terrain I have for sale. The link is in the video description. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Sundays and Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for regular model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure you do, and press the bell button to receive immediate notifications so you don't miss out. If you would like to purchase any of the materials we used in this project, please check out our list of links in the description. Any purchases you make will help support our channel. 
Miniature Landscape Hobbies has a Patreon account. There are many interesting rewards for our patrons so we can help you improve your own hobby skills. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.